Hello and welcome to Draw With Me today. Um, we're going to be drawing a scarlet lily bug. Um, the image has been provided from Pixabay by Sinuous XL and I will put that link in down the bottom of the description. And here I'm just drawing the bug. If you don't want to try and draw the bug freehand, you're quite welcome to go to my page and download this picture, which I will put there, and you can print that out. Please do not use the printing paper for your drawing, however, because it is the worst thing to, to draw in on coloured pencils. Transfer it, trace it, onto your good, or at least better, paper. I'm using cartridge here which isn't the best but we'll talk about papers some other time and this is what you'll find in your drawing books and it's my dog Amber having her word. Um, this is a paper that you'll find in your your drawing books and the most common around. Um, then I'm rubbing out the lines of where the it's going to be scarlet because I don't want the graphite to show through. I'm not worrying about rubbing out the lines where it's going to be black because it won't show at all anyway. Um, the coloured pencils I'll put down the bottom, what pencils I'm using. But honestly, any pencil that's around that colour will do. I'm not going to be fussy on brand or exact colour, just what you have already. Um, I'm using Faber-Castell um, Polychroma. It's a very good professional pencil at a price that isn't much higher than Prismacolors and their light fastness is um, very good. They also um, blend quite well. Now I've used the darker red to start the shadows. And there it is. It's a matter red I'm using. But as I said, a darker red. I use scarlet because it's a scarlet lily bug. I could have used a darker red for the scarlet areas, but it doesn't matter. And I'm brightening the um, scarlet areas with orange. I also, oh, okay, we're doing the black line down the middle with black. Adding some more scarlet and purple for the sh the shaded and shadow regions. So I'll go over the matter with purple to darken it. And before I even put any color, any of the red on this part, I'm going to shade it because there's quite a bit of shading on this little area here. So I do that with the purple. Very light strokes. If you use heavy strokes, you'll, you'll find you'll get into trouble because particularly with cartridge, it fills the tooth very, tooth of the paper is what we call the roughness of the paper and that has to be filled. But if you fill it too quickly, then you can't draw on top of it. So I've left the white, the paper color because white pencil doesn't go over very well. And here I'm layering the scarlet over the top of the purple and it gives it that darker appearance. But still reserving those white bits as just paper. A little bit of matter to darken the edges again. And a little bit of yellow to brighten the um, scarlet parts. Now, the reason I'm going white over these areas is because it's not quite white. It's a um, pale pinky colour. So, whereas the white I will leave white, you'll see that uh, if I go over it using a white pencil, I'm blending in the um, primary colour there, main colour there, by not necessarily the primary. And then we start the other side again by doing the shadows first and reserving the areas that I want white or lighter 
these areas down at the tail end will be coloured later just with the white pencil to blend the matter a little bit to give it a pinky colour. So this is all matter. Now this little bug has black dots. They're not very well um, seen on the far side and when they get up close to you they get a little bit more defined and some of these ones on this side actually have a little bit of white around them which I'll reserve by not colouring when I go with the scarlet. You won't see them much until I start to use a darker colour and then they'll become more obvious. It's, it's hard to see there that I've actually left some white. But when you get to the dark colour, it shows. So there's colouring in the nose, white bits so that they'll be pinker. And brightening it with a little bit of yellow. And here we go with the scarlet. And when we get up the top, you'll see... So this is the second layer of scarlet. When they say layering coloured pencils, people sometimes think, oh, I don't want to do, you know, 10 layers, 20 layers. It's not that many. Usually um, for something like this, two or three layers, uh, and it's only a small picture anyway. Um, for a portrait, I might go up to five, six, seven. I don't actually count them, so I don't know. But it's not hundreds of layers, so don't panic about layering coloured pencils but it does give uh, more of a feeling of depth than if you do it and you don't layer and if you try to do it all in one layer and by pressing hard you're just going to flatten the tooth of the paper and that won't work. You can see now the white areas that have been left. When you, um, anytime you need to stop this just do so and I'll wait. I'll be here when you get back. So a bit more pink down the bottom. Which is made by just going over the matter with the white pencil. See how quick it is? If only. But it's only a small bug. This one is 4 by 4 inches. That's why I've got a little box drawn around it. So I knew what to keep it in. So when you download it, it should be 4x4 four four inches. I um, Now, doing the black, black is rarely black. It's, it's, it's often got blue and purple or other reflected colours in it. The blue here are the highlights on the black. So I put them in first so I know to reserve them. And a little bit of purple to brighten the black. Of course, this particular bug is very shiny. Now the blue that I put on the face of the bug has some interesting marks. It's blue around the edges and then white in the middle. So I'll use my white pencil again just to smear that blue again a little bit and then go over it again in purple because you don't want too much dead black. You want to liven it with colours. And that's where layering comes in handy too. A little more of the white. And then all those funny little triangle shapes for his antenna. Once again, and we're going to reserve some of this for white so we don't colour the whole lot in black. We'll leave a few little bits that will do blue and a few little bits that we will leave white as, as highlights. Going over it with purple to make it brighter and not quite so black. Now, whenever you do anything like this where you've got an object sitting on the ground 
Always ground it with a shadow. It won't look real if it's floating in midair. Okay, we're almost finished the legs. I'm hoping to do more of these. I am hoping to do one a week if I can get the sound right. Uh, there we go with the blue areas in the leg. Now here's the shadow. Shadow in this case is purple. It usually is. Purple is a good color for shadows. Uh, you might get a grey purple sometimes, but purple is usually... The r and the reason for that is that purple is complementary to yellow, and we have a yellow sun. So shadows it casts are purple. You can sometimes definitely see this on the beach. If you learn to look at shadows and see the actual colour, if you're in a room with artificial light, then the shadow ch color may change. And I'm just going to go over this purple with white in a minute, just to try and smooth out the texture of the paper a little bit, because shadows are totally flat. So that pushes the purple colour into the tooth of the paper so that there are less lines and differences in, in colour. Um, in a shadow there can be differences in colour. Um, that's it really and there's the finished picture. And thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe and like if you liked it.